All right, so what's up, guys? Yeah, my name is Sean Larkin, um, and so, you know, the title, this is what, Pack 2 and Beyond, but the this.js special April edition. <laughs> um, so yeah, my name is Sean uh, Larkin. I'm a UX developer for Mutual of Omaha Insurance Company in Omaha, Nebraska. But you might know me as a maintainer and, a, and kind of filling the role as developer advocate for the Webpack open source organization. Uh, but I also spend time uh, on the Angular CLI team and just kind of an evangelist for open source sustainability. So we're kind of working our way out of the salt mines into the JS renaissance. So yeah, just a shout out to Mutual of Omaha. So I, I, uh, if you guys don't know where Nebraska is, I think most people tend to think it's like right about where this area is, but really we're right there. Yeah, so um, thanks to them for always being you know behind me and supporting this kind of stuff. Uh, so some other things I've been extremely interested in is just uh, building communities and, con and uh, contributors around the ecosystems of JavaScript and, and trying to encourage other people to get uh, excited about it. Uh, and so if you guys want to find me, you can always find me at the Lark Inn at all those links. Uh, and then you can ask me anything at my GitHub, uh, the Lark Inn slash AMA. It could be work, life, whatever, doesn't matter. And so, like I said, you know, we're going to talk about Webpack today. Um, and you know, I I can't make an assumption of you know who usually I have people raise their hands and say, you know, do you, do you know what Webpack is? So I'll just give you the the half elevator pitch. So uh, Webpack is a module bundler, and and what does that even mean? So a module bundler, in its most simple, bare bones explanation, is that it lets you write modules compiles them so they can work in the browser. There's all sorts of different module types, but I assume that most of you guys actually know what Webpack is in this case. Um, but I want to, to talk a little bit more about what's kind of going on for our community and, and what kind of updates. Uh, you know, what have we been doing since, uh, let's see, since Webpack 2. And we released Webpack 2 just a couple months ago. So, it was not only just about shipping Webpack 2 and getting people off beta, but it was more than that. It was about the community. And so number one feature that was requested was documentation. So if you have not been out to our documentation, go to webpack.js.org and take a look at it. Um, we think that this is the number one feature that shipped with Webpack 2. Uh, but it was also kind of like a brand revitalization for us. Um, you know, before I joined the core team, we didn't have a core team. Um, and we didn't do, uh, you know, we weren't having a medium for apparel or anything like that. And so this is kind of our way to be able to, uh, you know, we're starting off on the right foot and being able to put you at the center of our development. So what have we been up to, Sean? What, what, what are we doing? So. You know, the first thing is that we started, uh, we joined Open Collective, which is an open donation platform uh, in, I believe, October. And since then, we've raised through sponsorships and backers uh, together a estimated budget of $83,000 a year. And so to all those people out there who believe in us and uh, you guys are now stakeholders and shareholders of our product um, and have an equal opportunity now to, you know, to collect a part of the share uh, you know, that is in this um, platform. Uh, and even to so much that uh, the original author, Tobias Coppers of Webpack, is now working full time on the pro product because of these contributions. Um, and this is a huge, uh, this is a huge step for us. Uh, and not only a milestone for open source, but for a product that has never been backed by a, a single large company like Angular or React or, or any other tooling, it is all about the people who use it and the people who support it. And so uh, we see this as a really significant milestone for us. But some other things that we've been doing is just, uh, you know, each of the maintainers kind of have a special um, niche role. And so one of the things that I'm in charge of is, you know, developer relations, communications, and evangelism. And so we've been kind of upping our game when it comes to publications. So if you haven't taken a look at our Medium publication, go ahead and check it out. Not only is it going to contain Tobias's logbook for his you know, full-time freelancing of Webpack, 
but also is going to contain a whole bunch of different tips uh, and tricks and partner articles from people like Rich Harris, you know, from Rollup, um, and I, and even Addy is uh, has. And <laughs> um, myself and uh, Yuho Vepsiline, two maintainers, are are doing speaking uh, are speaking uh, across the country, uh, across the world right now as we speak. So uh, you can take a look at um, the Survive JS tour and and see where Yuho is traveling in Europe. And uh, you can always follow me on Twitter, and I'll I'll, I'll keep you up to date. Here's Yuho. Um, but on top of that, it, it's actually kind of nice that I went after basically all the browser teams speaking. Uh, and that's because, you know, every single one of them mentioned features that to us are some of our main, you know, our key initiatives to help them accomplish it in one way or another. So whether it be helping drive the web forward uh, with progressive web apps and helping create trivial, uh, you know, ways of accomplishing purple through Webpack. Um, we also worked, uh, you know, with the Chrome team as well as people like Jason Miller, the author of Preact, um, and helped them along the way to provide support to be able to ship and showcase these progressive web apps. And then working with Addy to come up with, you know, a great idea for being able to warn people that, hey, you're shipping too much code. Let's at least try and tail it back a little bit, and here are some tips that can help you. <laughs> now, on top of that, we're we're doing more than just working, you know, with the browser vendors, but we're also having to, you know, this has been a huge growth process for us. And so, looking back a year from, you know, roughly today, uh, in April of 2016, we had 500,000 monthly downloads, and as you can see to the far right, we now have over five million monthly downloads. Uh, for Webpack. And so it's been an, an incredible and uh, kind of inspiring year of growth uh, that we've seen. And not only that, but our, our community has grown. Um, you can kind of see here in the, in the same way, our contributions have exploded in 2017. And that's some of our initiatives are being able to provide a huge re rich ecosystem and a way for them to contribute to what some originally thought was a black box tool. And not only that, but maintenance of these contributions. Ha uh, now that Tobias is, or Socra as he's calling GitHub is full time, we have the opportunity to be able to better triage and better uh, accept contributions from people in the community. <clears throat> and so what else? Well, there are some other repos that we've added to our organization um, that you might have noticed or stumbled across. And so the first one was that, that we moved all of our loaders and plugins from the Webpack organization out to a separate organization called Webpack Contrib. Um, and the reason be behind this was one, we were running out of uh, Travis CI uh, available queues, uh, but also we wanted to have a set of standards across the board that allowed us to be able to apply for every loader and every plugin. We believe that the experience should be the same across the board, but it should also be easily accessible and maintainable by a group of individuals. And so we took uh, a few members of our contributor team, and they are now maintainers of Webpack Contrib. Uh, the second one on this list is the Webpack CLI. And you might say, Sean, we already have a CLI. What are you, what are you talking about? Um, well, so the, we believe and we recognize that the community uh, you know, has voiced their opinion that sometimes Webpack is not the easiest to get started with. And we want to be able to come up with a way that not only it's easy to migrate through breaking changes, but also to apply best practices, quick and easy setups uh, that are unobtrusive, but allow you to customize to your workflow and your behavior. We did the Webpack CLI, and it's still an alpha and beta uh, for some of its features, but We've hit the ground running on it, and we have a dedicated team who's worked on not only a migration feature to upgrade from Webpack 1 to Webpack 2, uh, but also an entire add-on system that allows people like library authors or framework authors to create add-ons that are, you know, have their stamp of approval and a best practice for setting up Webpack. And then we also moved in an awesome community, uh, awesome list, <laughs> uh, called Awesome Webpack. And so this is being updated at least weekly 
adding all of the incredible videos and, and resources that we are seeing from our community. And then finally, you know, right now we stand at Webpack 2.4.1, I believe, one. But this is our uh, our latest uh, minor sember. So 2.4, I wanted to just share a couple of features. If you haven't updated to it, we encourage you to do so. Um, but this adds some additional features that allow people to code split, um, but then support uh, features like server-side rendering, um, or handling uh, failed promises or error callbacks uh, if they're still using require ensure. Now what? What are you guys doing right now, Sean? So there's some in incredibly exciting stuff that you know I want to talk about. So the first thing is you know one of the, the the big features that everybody would like to have Webpack add, and that is the rollup style scope hoisting. And so right now, this is the number one voted feature on our voting page, and it is what we are actively working on as we speak. Now, on top of that, there is better tree shaking. So we've been pairing with the Clojure compiler team and um, a few of their top contributors to find uh, a better, more um, organic integration between Webpack and Clojure compiler. And then also taking some incredible plugins from the community, like hard source Webpack plugin, and implementing them natively. Uh, this is a little bit lower on our list, but still one of the top five on our voting board. And so we recognize this and want to be able to, to start experimenting with it. And then just general TypeScript integration and support for tree shaking, for compilation, for speed, et cetera. Um, in a perfect world, we would love to see TypeScript as a first class citizen. Um, but there's a lot uh, involved to make that happen. And so this is something on our list, and it's definitely important to us. And yeah, like I said, take a look at uh, this voting page right here. It's webpack.js.org slash vote. You can see that those four items are exactly the four items that I just mentioned. The point is that because you guys are our shareholders, um, the people who use and submit bugs and file issues, you guys are all in control of voting for what features come first, and especially those who are sponsors and backers. So if you haven't checked this page out, go ahead and take a look. Um, obviously, you can see there's an epic battle between scope hoisting and persistent caching. <laughs> and then uh, another feature that I wanted to talk about, and coming back to the how we're working with different browsers, is we started. Uh, talking with the Firefox team about WebAssembly integration. Um, uh, you can, I'll post the slides afterwards, but you can take a look at the initial proposal. But we believe that um, WebAssembly should be a first-class module type in Webpack and that it should be supported. Um, and so the benefits that come with this is allowing us to do something maybe as simple as this. There is no reason why a web developer should ever have to worry about having a shared memory buffer or having to write 14 lines of boilerplate code or worrying about compiling it to a WebAssembly module or worry if they're doing it correctly. The two-part step is that we believe that you should be able to directly import any language that can compile to WebAssembly, pass it through a loader, and have it return a WebAssembly module so that you can use it just like JavaScript. It should not be just limited to framework authors or gaming vendors. If you're a financial institution and you need to do heavy calculations on the front script, then you should be able to do so. And so we think that this first class integration not only is going to allow the adoption of WebAssembly, which we believe is you know, the future of the web to, um, to skyrocket, but we also believe that you know, it's going to make it easier and put it in the hands of people who may not be able to use it uh, in the state that it is today. And so you can also take a look at the Webpack CLI uh, repo. I know I talked about it before, but go to webpack slash webpack dash CLI. And right now, um, Evan Stensberg is working on the add-on add system. And we're looking for people to help create unit tests and add-on ideas. And just in general, use Webpack 2. Um, if you aren't there already, jump on the CLI and try and use the migrate feature. Um, or you can reach out to any of us at any time. Um, 
And then in addition, you can uh, go to opencollective.com slash webpack and reach out to us by becoming a sponsor or backer. Or if you can't, maybe convince your boss. We also have some special VIP services, so you can always email webpack at opencollective.com. Help shape our future by being a backer and a sponsor, or in what I like to consider it's a shareholder. You guys are the community, and the best part is that our top contributors, aside from the core team itself, spends freely for the work that they put into our organization and contributions. So we end up paying out more of the money to those who aid us in being able to make our community rich and vibrant um, than we do ourselves. So, you know, I don't uh, want to make it run too long, but you can reach me at, at the Lark Inn and honestly tweet me any feedback that you want or if you have questions about WebAssembly or if you want to get involved. One of the biggest needs that we have right now as an organization is just people who are willing to learn and having people who want to help. Um, and you can always tweet uh, hashtag Webpack and I will always read those tweets. So I spend about four or five hours a day on them. Oh, I forgot to mention, we did just submit uh, our Mozilla open source software grant for the for the feature. So um, we're asking, uh, you know, a large sum of money to help support all the maintainers to implement this feature. And I'm about to post Webpack Contributor Days. That's right. So Q1 of next year, we'll have that, which will be exciting. Hey there, are you into reactive programming using JavaScript? Do you have to deal with asynchrony in your web app? Then join this dot instructor, Ben Lesh, to learn all of the ins and outs of RxJS in his hands-on workshop. Available online and in person, go to rxworkshop.com for more details and to book your spot today. Hey there, do you use Angular? Do you like fun in the sun? And how do you feel about boats? If you're nodding yes, then uh, come join us on NG Cruise to learn more about Angular while on a fabulous Caribbean cruise. Check out ngcruise.com for speaker lineup, workshop details, and to book your spot today.